Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Hi, hello, my name is Loie and just to address the elephant in the room, my hair is red. I was being like uncharacteristically impulsive. I am someone who is not impulsive at all when it comes to the way that I look. I don't get tattoos. Like. I, I like barely change anything about my appearance because I'm so obsessed with like consistency in my videos and consistency in my projects. I'm always working on so much that like I'm just scared to change the way that I look. Something happened man and I just had to <laughs> go to CVS, buy two bottles of wine and five boxes of hair dye. With that being said, welcome back to yet another video on my channel. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about a new viral scary story that I was messaged about. Genuinely, I think that this is going to be like our new viral scary story. Like, I feel like we're still following along with the sun vanish, but updates are coming in slower and slower. This story seems to be moving at a decent pace and I don't know, I just have a feeling there is so much to it and I'm so excited to dive deep with you all. With that being said, before we get into the story, I quickly wanted to say just a couple of things. Number one, thank you all so much for staying tuned all of Loie's Little Boo, which was my 25 day celebration leading up to Halloween. I think I missed like three days which sucked. I really didn't want to miss any days, but I just kind of got a little bit overwhelmed at the end of the month. Um, that being said, it was really cool to upload every single day. I felt very like accomplished feeling like I did something every single day to give to you guys. And I feel like it's not really something that I have the luxury of doing most of the year, but because I have kind of some free time this month. I'm going to attempt Vlogmas as well, but I've decided that this November is officially dubbed Lovember. <laughs> is that cute? Is it dumb? I don't know. I'm gonna be uploading today when you're seeing this all the way through the end of November. I just, I had so much fun during October. I did miss a few days, but I don't feel like I'm making up for anything. I just want to do this because I love hanging out with you guys. I love talking to you guys every single day. It genuinely gives me so much purpose, so much just, I get so excited every single day knowing I get to wake up to like hundreds and thousands of comments on a new video from you guys. It was cool to try out new things, especially Simulacra that went so well on my channel and ended up going viral and telling different stories and just branching out of what I normally do. So I had a lot of fun with it and I want to continue to upload the rest of November. I took the first few days kind of slow, kind of easy, but today I am back with you all for a new viral scary story. Part seven of Simulacra will be up tomorrow, by the way, for those who will ask. Also, my hair is blonde in that because it was pre-filmed. Anyways, let's jump straight into the story. The account that I'm going to be talking about today is a Twitter account and it is spelled GR3 instead of an E, G-O-R-Y 88. So it's like Gregory with a three instead of an E. 88 and I was messaged about this like I said and looked into it and the story so far is so interesting. I'm gonna read you some of the tweets that this account had before it started tweeting about the events happening pretty much in the woods behind his house and he didn't start his account that long ago. It started on I guess it was July 22nd of 2018 at least that was the first tweet guess I'm gonna try Twitter again. Then, why does watching a movie at home feel like a huge commitment, but I can easily watch 17 episodes of Extreme Child Baker Showdown without batting an eye? Tonight I tried to pay my bar tab with my movie pass card, in case you're wondering how my night is going. The worst part about smelling eggs on the morning train is that you don't know if someone is eating a breakfast sandwich or someone ate a breakfast sandwich an hour ago. Maybe this is the year I finally watched Lost. Just to give you context, those are how normal the tweets on this account were leading up to where everything kicked off. But a vital piece of the story before the story begins is that on August the 27th, Greg tweeted, just found out my grandpa died. Never really knew him, but still. My mom never wanted to talk about him and I never really asked. And then, five days ago when I'm filming this, but probably uh, closer to a week when you are seeing this. Something weird is happening in the woods outside my house and I don't know what to do. I guess I should start at the beginning. This isn't really my house. It was my grandpa's, but I guess it's mine now. He died a couple of months ago and because of some tricky paperwork, I'm apparently responsible for it now. 
He lived pretty far away, up in the mountains by a lake. There are a couple of other houses down the road, but they seem like they're empty for the season. I assume they're summer houses. I've been here for a few days and it's really pretty, but it's super quiet and chilly. My mom never talked about my grandpa, and I only met him once, when I was really young. I think they had a bad relationship, but the few times I asked about it, she got annoyed and changed the subject. So basically, I don't really know what I'm doing here. This guy from my grandpa's estate basically told me the house is mine now, so I came up here to sell it as fast as I can and go home. I guess it's not that easy to just sell a house, especially one in the middle of nowhere. At any rate, I think I'm alone up here. Or at least I was. I figured I'd be up here for a couple of weeks to get this all handled, and then I'd go home and be done with it. I'm on break from grad school, so I don't have any other responsibilities at the moment. But now weird things are starting to happen. It started on my third day here. There's a little town about 25 minutes away, and I'd gone to get some food and supplies since I don't know how long I'm staying. When I got back that evening, there was something strange on my door. It was this artifact? I don't know what to call it. It was obviously handmade. It was made of sticks and twine and had some small bones tied into the middle of it. I didn't think too much of it at the time. I figured it was probably a kid from one of the other houses trying to mess with me. So I took it off the door and tossed it in the fireplace. Just a quick little reader's note here. I feel like that probably wasn't that smart to do. And if anything, what's happening in the woods could stem from the act of burning this thing. I mean, there are bones in it. It definitely looks like it could be symbolic of something and maybe burning it let something really not nice out. By the next morning, I'd pretty much forgotten about it. And honestly, I had too much on my plate at the moment to worry about some kid's prank. So I got up that morning, made some breakfast, and went out on the deck with some coffee. I was sitting there drinking my coffee when I noticed something hanging in a tree just over the railing. It was another one of those artifacts. It was just like the last one but it had a rock tied to it instead of a bone. And then almost immediately, I saw another one and a tree farther down by the ground. I went down the deck steps to retrieve it and then I started seeing even more of them. I found about eight in total hanging in the trees all around the house. They all had different objects tied to them, bones, feathers, that sort of thing. It was definitely weird, but I was more annoyed than anything, thinking that someone was in my yard decorating the trees with those ugly goth Christmas ornaments. Also, if someone was trying to scare me, it was going to take more than some B arts and crafts project to do the trick. I gathered all the artifacts together and burned them, like the first one. After I disposed of the sick things, I took a shower, got dressed, and went back outside to do some basic tidying and whatnot. The deck and the yard are sort of overgrown and the leaves are starting to fall and cover everything. Being a new homeowner is a lot of work, turns out. That was when I found something that actually did make me nervous. I was raking a corner of the yard when I saw something dark on the ground, off in the trees. I couldn't tell what it was from afar, so I went to investigate. At first I thought it was a blanket, but when I got closer it looked like a big sweatshirt or hoodie or something. I didn't want to touch it, but it was obviously clothing of some kind. I looked around and realized it was a whole encampment. There were a couple of old socks, a pair of what I think was underwear, gross, a few old napkins scattered around, a plastic spoon, and creepiest of all, a beat up notebook. I flipped open the notebook, but nothing was written inside. A whole bunch of pages had been ripped out, so I know someone had been using it. Plus, you could sort of see the shadow of pen marks on the most recent page. I couldn't make out what had been written, though. Anyway, that definitely freaked me out. It was clear someone was camping out on my property and possibly trying to scare me out of the house. I wasn't really sure what to do about it though. What could I do? That was the day before yesterday. The next morning, I sort of expected more weird artifacts to be outside, but I didn't see anything. And the encampment was gone, so I figured it was probably a homeless person passing through or something. I thought that was the end of it and turned my attention back to the house. I realized the house had almost no cleaning products and I needed to pick up supplies again. I drove into town and picked up some Windex, some spare light bulbs, and some other stuff, and then came home. The driveway ends a ways up from the house, and then you have to track down a path which bends around the side of the house to get in. I was walking around the house when I saw some movement across the yard near a tree. I froze dead in my tracks. Someone was standing under a tree, staring at my house. They didn't see me though, since I was also partly behind some trees and a good distance away. 
Whoever it was, they were wearing the same dark hoodie I'd seen in the grass the day before. As quietly as I could, I set down my shopping bags next to me and slipped my phone out of my pocket. I managed to take a couple of photos, but the person turned and disappeared into the woods. I stood there for a couple of minutes, too nervous to move, in case the person came back. But they didn't, so I picked up my bags and hurried inside. I picked up the phone to call the cops, but I put it back down because I didn't even know what I'd tell them. Someone was looking at my house? Like any police officer would take me seriously. And like an idiot, I destroyed all the weird artifacts from before, so there wouldn't even be any evidence. I felt like there was nothing I could do right then. I was mad at myself and feeling scared all alone in the house, so I locked down all the doors and left out the back. I went down to the lake because I didn't know where else to go. I just knew I didn't want to be in the house at that moment. I walked a ways down the lake shore, then sat for a while looking out at the water. I thought about getting in my car and just going home, but I felt like that would get me in trouble. There's all sorts of property tax stuff I don't understand. I felt trapped. Also, I couldn't decide if I was actually in any danger. When my grandpa died, it took me a couple of months to actually get up to the house. So maybe someone was squatting in the empty house? And now that I'm here, they may just leave on their own accord? It was starting to get dark, so I reluctantly headed back to the house. I walked up the stairs leading to the back of the house, but right before going inside, I got this weird chill. I made up my mind that I absolutely did not want to stay in the house overnight. I decided to go get my car and drive into town to find a motel for the night. The house was all locked up and I already had my keys, so I went back around the house and towards the path that led to the driveway, and that's when I saw her. The figure from before, standing right in the middle of my front lawn, staring straight at my house. I froze in place, completely in shock. I was practically right next to her, but it was almost as if she couldn't see me. Then it hit me. She couldn't see me, because she had no eyes. She had no eyes. Just shiny skin over where her eyes should be. And she had almost no hair at all. I wanted to run, but I felt like if I moved even a little, she'd hear me. As quietly as I could, I went for my phone. I needed some sort of evidence to show the cops. It all felt like it was happening in slow motion. I feel sick to my stomach as I'm writing this, but I was able to get it on video. My heart is racing just thinking about this. I haven't been able to watch it since I recorded it, but here it is. Yeah, no, the way that she whips her head towards him, not okay with that. <sighs> I ran back around the house and got inside. I scrambled upstairs and looked out my bedroom window at the front yard, but she had vanished. Remembering it now, it feels like it didn't really happen, like it was a nightmare or something. I called the cops and explained what had happened. I'm sure I sounded crazy, but they said they'd send someone by in the morning and to keep my doors locked. So that's where I am now alone, in the woods, freaking out. I know I won't be able to sleep tonight. I feel lightheaded and nauseous. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm scared. So that was the first thread, and then a few days later, he updated again. The past couple days have been really strange. I also have bad reception up here, so I'm sorry for not updating. They sent a police officer up yesterday morning, but I feel like it didn't accomplish anything. I explained everything to the cop, and I even took him out to the clearing where I found the stuff, but it was all gone except for the notebook. And since the notebook is empty, it was basically useless. I feel like the cop didn't believe me anyway. I showed him the photos I took of the stick things, and he said at worst it counted as vandalism, but without physical evidence of trespassing, they couldn't do anything. Even when I showed him the video, he still acted really skeptical. He kept asking if I knew the person in the video. I think he thought I was just pranking him or something. I ended up just getting frustrated. The cop said to call the station if something happened. After he left, I went back and got the notebook from the clearing. Maybe there's a way to figure out what was written on the last page. I don't know. Anyway, the cop drove away and I was all alone again. It's so quiet up here. All I want to do is leave, but I feel like I can't. I'm so far away from home that I can't even invite a friend up here to keep me company. And even if someone did come, it would take them a couple of days. I haven't seen the woman from before, but I feel like she's still out there. And other weird things are happening too. I took a walk around the lake yesterday because I wanted to get a look at the other houses in the area. Maybe see if someone else had noticed anything weird. But they're all empty. 
every house is totally dark and there are no cars in any of the driveways. I haven't seen a single person at all, except once. Well, sort of. After I came back from my walk, I was out on the deck and saw a boat in the water, way off in the distance. They weren't moving. They stayed there all afternoon. I feel like they were watching me. They actually stayed out there in the same place until it got too dark to see them anymore. Normally I'd think they were just fishing if it weren't for what happened the day before. And the fact that all of those houses seem empty. Where did they come from? The boat was gone this morning, so who knows. I microwaved some oatmeal for breakfast and took it down to the dock near the water. It's weird, but I sort of feel safer down there. The water makes me feel less stressed, I guess. I kind of feel like time goes by faster when I'm by the lake. It's like meditative or whatever. Anyway, I was actually starting to feel a little better about everything this morning if it wasn't for what happened next. I had finished my oatmeal and was starting back towards the house when I noticed something in the water. It was in this little inlet by the shore. It was small and white and at first I thought it was a brightly colored rock, but I wasn't sure. It seemed too round. Probably against my better judgment, I took off my shoes and went into the water to retrieve it. It was an eyeball. A freaking eyeball. I hate that so much. This has to be from an animal, right? Please tell me this is from a big fish or something. I threw it back in the water and hustled back up to the house. I washed my hands in the sink and then sat on the couch for a long time. I don't know what's going on. I can't believe I picked that up out of the water. I still feel gross. And to make matters worse, the boat is back out there. It showed up again this afternoon and it's just sitting there in the same place as yesterday. Are they watching me from that boat? That was three days ago when I'm filming this and I'm pretty sure that by the time that I upload this video, there will already be another update or another one will be coming. But regardless, I'm really interested in this story so far. Definitely interested to hear you guys' theories and thoughts on what could possibly be in the woods behind this guy's house. Um, that woman <laughs> without the eyes, I don't like her. I don't know who she is, but I don't like her very much. It's just the way her head snapped towards him and like, it can't be human. At least I don't think so, but I just wonder if it was like brought on because he burned those. They almost look like talismans more than art. Like, I don't know. They, they look very distinct and like there's a very specific point to them. So you guys let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you for joining me for the first day of November. I love you all so very much. Give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I love you guys and I will catch you in my next video. Bye.